Python scripting in Unreal Engine. In this video we will talk about how to connect Python Qt GUIs with Unreal Engine in order to get graphical user interfaces in place. The tool of choice for creating these graphical user interfaces is the Qt Designer and we will use that because it's pretty easy to set up simple GUIs. There are a ton of resources out there on how to use the Qt Designer and how to do Qt with Python. So if you have any confusion with Python Qt, check out the documentation or any other videos on how to create queries with Qt Designer. Before we switch over into the Unreal Engine and do anything in there, we want to set up the basic settings and the basic setup for the GUI itself. So what we want to do is we want to import the PySite Qt Core, Qt GUI and Qt Tools. Once we have done that, we will create a class definition of our simple GUI, which inherits from the QWidget. Our init method of the simple GUI class takes two parameters. One is the self object and the other one is the parent, which is none by default. We have to call the super method to give the same information to the parent element. In order to load our graphical user interface that we created in Qt Designer and save to our system, QI Loader class of the Qt UI Tools element. Loading our Qt UI Designer UI file is as simple as just passing in the full qualified path to our UI. In order to make the UI appear when we execute a script, we need to create an instance of the GUI. We want to make sure that there is only one instance running of the GUI, so we want to have an if check here that checks for application instances and only instantiates a new application when there is not already one running. The final step is to instantiate our GUI and show it. Switching over to Python and executing our script, we will see an empty widget showing up. However, what we want to show is our own widget, so let's switch back to VS Code and fix our code. First, we want to import the sys library. And in order to show our own GUI instead of just an empty widget, we have to bind our widget to a parent. In our case, this is simply the self element. Switching back to Unreal and re-executing our script, we can now see that our GUI is showing with the right size and all the elements are interactable. So it's now time to give the elements some logic. Next step, we want to set the geometry of the UI just to make sure that our widget is displayed correctly. We will see an example where this comes in handy in the next video where we will be creating a UI widget for the search and replace algorithm. Accessing the elements is pretty easy because the whole document is an XML file. We can simply find the children that are according to some definition. In our case, we want to get the Q line edit elements for the text boxes. And if we go to the QT designer and click on the text box, we can see the Q line edit element in the inspector. Each object needs to get the reference to its own type. So if we set up the checkbox here, we can see that we need to add the Q checkbox element instead. Buttons itself can be set up in the exactly same way. So let's create a new reference to our button OK and assign it to self.widget.findchild and in this case we will use OK button and the type of push button. Once we found the reference to our button, we can assign it a clicked handler. So once the button has been clicked, the method given will be executed. So let's create this OK clicked method in our object class. And just like with any normal Python class, it will get the self object passed as a parameter.
What we want to do in this method is we want to get the elements of the left and the right text and the checkbox state in order to display it to the user. As final statement, we will just do a simple Unreal logging to put the left value, the right value and the checkbox value to our output log. Switching over to Unreal Engine and executing our script, we can see that our GUI pops up and if we enter information in our left and right text box, we can see the information popping up once we click the OK button. So let's switch back to the code editor and do the exactly same thing for our cancel button. You can also bind the method to our cancel button and in this case we just want to give the user some information that the cancel button has been clicked and we want to close the GUI. A quick test in the Unreal Engine shows us that it works perfectly fine. The next element we want to set up is the slider. And for the slider we have some more options, but in general it's the same process over again. We find the child with the Q slider element and the label horizontal slider. We can then give the slider some connection to a method once it's moved with a slider moved element. For now, in this method, we just want to print out the value of the slider. If we go back to Unreal Engine and restart our script and move the slider, we can see that the value is going to be logged out. Here we can see that the values are between 0 and 100, so if we want to change that, we can simply do that in the Qt editor, the Qt designer. In our case, let's change them to minus 300 and 300, because our viewport is that big currently. Restarting the script in Unreal Engine, we can now see that the values are between minus 300 and 300. For this example, we want to move an actor in our viewport according to the slider. So what we want to do is we want to use the editor level library in order to move the element. We can use the editor level library to get the currently selected actors. In order to avoid errors, we want to check whether the length of the selected actors is greater than zero and just take the first actor for now. In order to change the translation in the world, we need to get the old transform from our actor. We can then adjust the X, Y or Z position of our actor by providing a new value. In our case, we want to use a slider value. The final step is to set back the actor transforms with our new transform element. The two other parameters are not important for now. Going back to Unreal Engine and re-executing our script, we can take a look at the location Y element and we can see that it moves. The world only updates if we click into the viewport, so if we change the slider and then click into our viewport, we can see that the element moves in the viewport. If for any reason you should encounter a problem with the installed dependencies for Python, in this case PySci. We can append system paths for our site packages into the script directly so that Unreal has to load them. Alternatively, we can use the project settings and Python subsetting to enable some additional paths at the beginning. So here we can also load the Python 2.7 site packages folder if we should encounter any problem with, with the dependencies. This concludes the GUI introduction tutorial. In the next tutorial we will look into how to connect one of our existing scripts with a graphical user interface.